Who is this? I said, this is a whole different person. It's still it's a little hard to get meds. No, they're not. They're not gonna give me meds. If you fry this, it's a little hard to get meds. I'm just saying. She said, I know people. Down. Yeah, that's that's it. It's almost out. Push. Yeah, she's looking how pretty. Yeah, there you go. Look at the hair. I know, Pooh. guys so mother's day is right around the corner it's actually tomorrow so i thought it would be a great time to come and tell you guys my birth story so if you're interested in hearing the birth story <laughs> then just stay oh. tuned for you guys who really know me like out here in the world <laughs> i was not the most uh pleasant pregnant person I don't know if it was because it was a female pregnancy I don't know if it was because I'm over 30 I don't know what it was about this pregnancy but it was pretty difficult it was the most difficult pregnancy that I've had there weren't any complications I did go to the hospital a couple times my blood pressure was getting a little bit high but honestly it wasn't a hard pregnancy I was just miserable and please don't send me comments I know there are people out there who struggle to have babies and it's such a blessing I am NOT taking anything away from the fact that this is an amazing blessing from God to be able to create carry deliver and nurture a child not taking anything from that but I wasn't all glowy I wasn't all nice and sweet and you know I was mean I was mean and cranky and miserable the last week of my pregnancy I cried every day and my poor husband would just look at me like Is she gonna come <laughs> like I promise you she gonna come when it's time I'm sorry she's coming soon you know so we're counting on the days because I cried every day and it wasn't to the point where I had depression I did look up depression I try to look up like the symptoms like do I have this like what is this you know and I tried to really check myself because I did have like a tinge of postpartum with my um youngest son but I think it was just the environment it wasn't really healthy for me that relationship wasn't the best so I didn't have all the love and support that I have now um, so definitely have no no issues with that, but I just wasn't the uh, Most pleasant pregnant person. So I tried everything I did uh, Raspberry leaf tea. I did squats. I did um, I Walked a couple miles every other day. I Took castor oil. Yes, I did um, Nothing worked Nothing worked to get this baby out I was like oh my goodness I even took like we went and where they do like a prenatal massage but it was like a acupuncture acupressure type of massage and she was like yeah most people have um, the baby within 24 hours some babies are stubborn and come within like four days I, I do say the baby came four days um, after that but <laughs> Literally, we went home after that and I ended up crying. That's when my crying started because I was like, dude, like, I love the massage. It was amazing. We did a couple's way. So my husband got him a massage as well. But I'm still pregnant. I'm still pregnant. <laughs> so he would count the hours. Like, she was like, most babies are born within the first 24 hours. People like, babe, it's only 16 hours left. Babe, you got eight hours left. Baby didn't come. I was pissed. So... It is what it is. I did drink, start drinking raspberry leaf tea. You know, I would have a lot of Braxton Hicks. With my Braxton Hicks, I would kind of like get into um, like a squat 
or do a lot of the positions that women did with the ball i would do it with my bed like the fire hydrant when your leg is like cocked up on the ball i did that with my bed i was on the floor kind of in a downward dog and i would put my leg up um on the bed and like sway my husband would come in like but you know i'm like no get out get out oh and sex people always say have sex have sex have sex <sighs> yes and honestly, anyway, uh, anyway, so um, the night that I went into labor, um, I started having contractions around midnight and I had had contractions before. I had had contractions that lasted for hours before. So I was like, mm, you know, I'm cool. But then there was something different about these contractions. Um, there was like an aura to it. So contractions that I had before, it was like boom contraction contraction over there was no beginning middle and end to it these contractions kind of like crept in and then they kind of got worse and then they kind of crept out so i was like okay that's something different so they started coming they kept coming they were like about five minutes apart so i was like okay my husband's at work my husband works third shift my husband's at work okay so i called my friend I'm like, hey, <laughs> having contractions. I've been having them since like for like over an hour. Um, they're about five minutes apart. And she's like, okay, I'm out of town. I was like, no. <laughs> she wasn't that far, but she was like, she's out of town. So I was like, okay, so my husband is at work. So he's over an hour away. My friend is two hours away. Let me get my mind together. So I was like, okay, well let me like see let me try to chill see if they go away because usually i would just go to sleep and i'm like if it was real i couldn't sleep well these are i couldn't sleep so i decided to just go um so i went to the hospital because i was driving myself and they were like coming five minutes apart and they were like killing me but mind you when i went it was about 2 30 in the morning and I hadn't eaten nothing. <laughs> so I stopped at cookout <laughs> to get some food, which is so crazy. But when, you know, when you're in labor, they don't feed you. So you're like, all right, I gotta eat. So I'm like holding on to the, the handrail thing. And I'm ordering my food and I get my food. I'm trying to eat my food and drive. The hospital is about 15, 20 minutes really away because I have to go a longer way because it's in the middle of, middle of the night. So, I get to the hospital, get in triage, like I'm having contractions. They put me on a monitor, having contractions. Um, I see one of my girlfriends because I, I work at the hospital and I used to work in the emergency department. So I text my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, I'm upstairs. She's like, cool, bet. I'm going to come see you. She comes up there, see me. They put me on a monitor. She's like, okay, just let me know what they say, you know, all that. My friends take such amazing, amazing care of me point blank period y'all gonna see from this crazy story so i'm like okay so i stay in triage they're pretty much like i'm two centimeters um i hadn't ruptured she's like come back when your contractions are two minutes apart and lasting for two minutes i said oh i'm gonna die that's a lot because the way i feel right now this is crazy so I'm like, okay. So I go downstairs. I call my friend. I'm like, I'm coming back downstairs. I go downstairs and I see like all of my friends, all the nurses, even the providers are like, you know, the baby's coming, blah, blah, blah. And I tell them what they say. They're like, no, y'all go walk. So we go walk around the hospital. Um, Cause I was going to walk by myself and my friends were like, heck no. Like there's no way you're walking by yourself. We're going to walk with you. We're going to make sure you're okay. We walked for one hour guys one hour just no hills no slopes just walking around just with me walking around literally i went from five minutes to probably around three minutes to back to back to back no relief no relief i was like i think my water broke like i had to like keep like crouching over and bending over i was like i think my water broke i can't tell i can't tell if my water broke but i I think my water broke so I would go to the bathroom I was in the bathroom like three times and every time I would come out they were like did your water break I'm like I don't know 
I don't know, but I think it broke. So <laughs> after like, I say about an hour and a half because I came back to the, um, you know, the emergency room and I, I was just trying to get through contractions. They weren't going away. They were getting hard. Like, honestly, guys, if they tell you to go home, don't. Go walk. Walk around the parking lot. Take your spouse. Take your friend. Whoever. Whatever support system you have. If you don't have a support system, make laughs around the emergency room, waiting room. Like, honestly, don't drive. If you drove yourself, don't drive yourself home. Because I wouldn't have made it. Like, my kids wouldn't have had no, parent, no mom if I drove myself home and then tried to come back. One of them routes won't go make it. So... I go back upstairs and this is like the power of my friends because I literally had like three nurses, a secretary, and a um, doctor walk upstairs with me. Like, excuse me, y'all gonna take care of our person, period. Like, I don't even work with these people anymore, but that is just like when I tell people to always be good to people and, you know, really get to know it and just, just give your true self to people because if you're good to people, they'll be good to you. In that moment, I couldn't give nobody nothing. But they all just rallied behind me. And like, they're like, look, this person, she's not always like this. The baby's coming. Like, we see it. We know y'all blinded because y'all see this stuff like this every day. But we really need you to take care of her because she's one of ours. And I, I really, truly, truly appreciate that. So, get upstairs. My two friends stay. One of my friends, honestly, she has my phone. She keeps like, put your finger on this phone. Put your finger on it. Because she's calling. She's calling my husband, keeping him informed. Calling my sister, keeping her informed. Calling my mom, keeping her informed. Calling my girlfriend, keeping her informed. Like, keeping everyone informed on what's going on with me. Because no one is here. <laughs> no one is local. Everyone is, like, hours away. So, my husband is like, well, I'm going to leave work. And I told him, like, multiple times. Babe, no, I don't want you to take, you know, leave work, drive all crazy to get here, and they send me back home. Like, they gonna keep me before you leave work. So, when we went back upstairs, the contractions were unbearable. They were truly unbearable. I was done. Like, I was, like, crawling up my friend. Like, I feel so bad. I know I, pro I probably apologized, like, 37 times when I was done because... I was in so much pain. Like with my with my boys, they broke my water, but they didn't start contractions or anything. So I had never went through the whole having contractions, opening up part. I was always induced. So with her, mm -mm, there was no induction. Like she was like, you want me out? Okay. <laughs> so... I was crawling at my friends. They're, they're back to back. At this point, guys, like, I'm telling you, I took all my stuff off, my bottoms, everything. And I am standing, like, next to the bed, swaying, booty naked. I don't care. <laughs> I think I had, like, a, a undershirt or something on. But I ain't got no bottoms on, and I am leaking on the floor. Yes, I work at this hospital. <laughs> Yes, but I was like, you know what? We gonna find out if my water really broke. <laughs> I cannot lay down. I cannot. I tried to get a downward dog on the bed. I tried standing up. No position was comfortable. I was crawling up my friend's arms, literally. Like at one point I had like one leg cocked up, pulling her down with the other leg, like just trying to figure it out. So a different doctor came in and checked me and he's like well you were just here an hour ago so i don't expect much change i said okay so he checked me i was four centimeters <laughs> and my water had broken but he's like okay let's get you an epidural i was like thank you so needless to say i did act up in triage i did i'm sorry don't be like me i was like yelling how i let it all out all out because I love nurses. It's nurses week. Nurses week is coming to an end. I love nurses. But sometimes you can get so uh, used to, you know, the situation that you kind of block it out. Um, and my pain, they was blocking it out. And I wasn't, 
I'm not used to this, you know? So you have to keep it fresh. You, you gotta make sure you don't get to that part, that position, that place, there we go, um, in your career where you can just block out someone else's pain. So I was letting it out. Like, they was like, girl, you was like in there, like going off. And I was like, I know, my bad. Like, I apologize to the, the lady, the nurse. I called her by her name. I was apologizing, apologizing by name because I was just like, mm. yeah, I was pretty mean to you. Um, so something that really doesn't happen was the anesthesiologist came into the triage room. He was like, you acting up, let me get you some pain medicine. So he asked me all the questions, told me all the stuff in the triage room. And he was like, okay, I'll meet you in your room. <sighs> Won't he do it? Won't he do it? So it took about 10 more minutes for me to get to my room because I had to start an IV pretty pissed because they put a huge IV in my hand and first she tried right here and I know I was out of it because I'm a, I'm a paramedic I would not have let her do this to me okay um but I wasn't looking I was trying not to move because I'm pretty sure I was having contractions so then she did a huge one right here and I was just like what the heck so when I went to my actual room I asked the nurse like why did she do that and she was like I don't I don't know I don't do that because granted okay so usually we do this AC crooking your arm but when you have the baby you don't do that so we go right here you know so you can grin and bear it but not 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 right here it's pretty delicate right here but that's a tangent that's okay so I went to my room the anesthesiologist came. I loved my nurses. I had such an amazing experience. She was so sweet. She was talking to me. She was like, because my friends had, went back downstairs at this point. So, because my husband showed up like right after. So, um, she was talking to me. She was looking at me. You know, she was like, just keeping me so calm because I was in so much pain. But I had to be still so I can get this needle on my back. So, <laughs> she um, she was such a sweetheart. And then once I got my epidural, you know, she went ahead and put my catheter in. This is a lot of TMI. But when she checked me, I was six. So I said, oh, you know, we about to have this baby in a couple hours. At this point, it's like 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm moving like two centimeters every hour. So I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna have this baby before, you know, by breakfast. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, we're moving. My husband gets there as soon as my epidural starts kicking in. So I am calm. You know, nice, sweet Renee cracking jokes again. You know, I am, you know, me. <laughs> so he just like, oh, this is cool. And I'm like, babe, I don't want to relive the pain. But you should have been there because now you think this is like a piece of cake and it's not. Ugh, dads. But that's neither here nor there. So we continue to progress. My my doctor was actually there, which actually, excuse me, let me fix that. My midwife, she was actually there. Um, it's totally different, totally different. So I really want, wanted her to deliver the baby, but you know, she does rotations upstairs and downstairs in the clinic. So there was like flip of the coin if she was going to be there to deliver the baby, like on GP, because I was going to have him call her. <laughs> but she was just working that day. So I was like, yes. So it was so nice at 7 a.m. when everyone switched and I saw my doctor and I was like, yes, you about to have this baby, girl. You about to have this baby. Um, so continue to progress they checked me last time they checked me i was nine so i was like all right bet we about to have this baby uh came back two hours later i was still nine i was like okay so what's going on they put me in a little peanut um which is like the ball that moms bounce on but it has like the little dip in the middle they put that between your legs still not really opening up so she's like i think the baby is insert medical term for face up so she checks, she get the ultrasound in there, they check, baby face up. So a little sidebar, when you when you deliver baby, their head down, um, because their shoulders like kind of crunch, I can't really crunch because I'm an adult and my shirt a little tight. 
um, but their shoulders like bend in and they come out like that, right? When you're face up, you can't do that bend. You can't, they can't do that little bend and you're hitting this. So it's really hard to come out. Um, so they were like, from my perspective, they were elbows deep in, no, what I say? I said shoulder. I think I said shoulder deep in my birth canal. <laughs> Um, turning the baby as I pushed. They won't. They was about wrist deep, but it looked like shoulder deep from where I was sitting. Um, so they turned the baby, did the ultrasound. She good to go, right? Keep pushing. This little monster flips again, but this way she's sideways. So she comes out sideways. Yeah. So I actually had them cut my epidural off because... I know how to push like I'm like it's like a backwards kegel like those muscles instead of going in you pushing them out she's like yeah yeah well I couldn't feel nothing I was like I think I'm pushing but I think I'm just grunting because I can't feel none of that down there none of that down there so I'm like so I asked myself like, can you cut my epidural off cut it down cut it off you know let's get this baby out I'm tired so they cut it down, still can't feel nothing. They cut it off. I was like, oh God. <laughs> I'm at 10 centimeters. At, at six, I was about to kill somebody. So I know I don't want to feel this contraction. So we got to get this baby out. So I started to feel them, started to feel the aura, started to feel them come in. I pushed for an hour. Um, the last couple of pushes were honestly like, we're not waiting for contractions. You got to keep pushing because she was sideways. So there was some maneuvers that I'm pretty sure that had to be done to get her out and when she came out she she had a cone head but that's because she was so low and she was in the birth canal for so long that she had a little cone head poor baby um but yeah that was her birth story my husband cut the cord he held my leg the whole time my friend ended up coming so she did not miss the birth um it was a totally different experience because it was just us it wasn't really like when I had my first son, my mom was there. When I had my second son, my grandmother was there. But this time it was my husband. So, I don't know. I just feel like I'm growing in life, even though this is our last baby. Um, but it was it was a beautiful experience. His parents drove down. My parents, my mom came a couple days later. Um, but she's beautiful. Um, so, we are t about to be three weeks on Tuesday. Three weeks old. Um... And she is just the, the cutest little nuggets ever. So as she gets older, you know, I will formally introduce you guys to her. Um, but right now the lights and everything is just a little bit much for her. All she really does is sleep and eat and poop. You know, the good life. Um, but thanks guys for, you know, listening to my very interesting uh, birth story. I think my friends, like, I can't even, like, put in words because, honestly, if they weren't there for me before my husband got there, I wouldn't have been able to make it. That was the hardest part of my labor, and they held me all the way down, <laughs> all the way down the entire time. Did not leave my side until he came, and even after he came, they came and checked on me. They made sure I was good, like, and that's just what true friends do, honestly. Like, you don't have to talk to people every day. You ain't got to be in people's face all the time. But when the connection is real, like, when it's time for someone to step up, they're going to. Period. And you do that for people, and they'll do that for you. It's not tit for tat. It's just, it's just being a good person, you know? And I'm so glad that as I grow and mature, the people around me are so genuine, so sweet, and so amazing. And I would like to think that maybe that's the person I'm turning into as well. You know, you attract what you are. That's what they say. Um, and then also my midwife, guys. This is my first experience with a midwife and I absolutely loved it. We had a ball. She was amazing from the first appointment to, you know, catching Octavia Renee out the birth canal. She had a little meconium, which I was afraid of, um, but it, it all was taken care of. She was perfect and she still is. So I want to thank you guys for going through this journey with us and spending 25 minutes with me as I tell my story. Hmm. Probably longer because I'm gonna insert clips. <laughs> 
of her birth so yeah but thanks guys so 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 much i really do appreciate each and every one of you um and that's it <laughs> bye